split a two carbon acetyl sugar apart, you form two carbon dioxides from it. If you did that to this acetyl sugar and you did to, to this acetyl sugar, then what you end up with are four carbon dioxides. You might say, well, how did you get four? Again, there was a total of how many carbons altogether in these two acetyl sugars? One, two, three, four. Each of the two acetyl sugars has been split apart, forming four carbon dioxides. Notice that by the end of the Krebs cycle, the sugar has been totally broken apart into six carbon dioxides. You'd say, how did I get six? <clears throat> the sugar, in breaking apart the sugar, two carbon dioxides were formed in the transition reaction of aerobic respiration. The remaining four carbon dioxides were formed in the Krebs cycle, series of reactions of aerobic respiration. That's a grand total of six carbon dioxides. We began by saying that in cellular respiration, one glucose molecule was going to be broken apart into a total of six carbon dioxides. The sugar has been totally broken apart. It has been totally oxidized, which is the removal of hydrogen atoms and the splitting of the sugar apart. Now, a couple of other things that occur in the Krebs cycle. First, two ATPs are produced. Now, this occurs in some cells, not in all cells, but in muscle cells, two additional ATPs are generated in the Krebs cycle. That's known as substrate phosphorylation. The other things that are formed in the Krebs cycle is six NADs. You'd say, who are they? That's the B vitamin niacin. Six NADs, each of them picks up a pair of hot potato hydrogen atoms and electrons. So the last remaining hydrogen atoms are being removed from the sugar molecule. Now in case you're a number cruncher and you're keeping track of the hydrogens, you might say, well, wait a second. We don't have enough hydrogens from the sugar to have formed all these NADH2s. The answer to this is that some water molecules also get involved, but we're not going to deal with those water molecules. The important thing is that six more NADs each pick up a pair of hot potato hydrogen atoms and electrons. And you might say, so is that it? Are we done? One last thing. Two FADs also pick up a pair of hydrogen uh, atoms and electrons. So the question is, what is FAD? Now we know that NAD is the B vitamin niacin. What FAD is, technically it stands for flavin adenine dinucleotide, but you know it more commonly as the B vitamin riboflavin. The B vitamin riboflavin, like the B vitamin niacin, is also involved in the transferring of hot potato hydrogen atoms from the sugar molecule as it's broken apart in cellular respiration to transfer those hydrogens onto oxygen. So, in Kre the Krebs cycle, the sugar molecules, the acetyl sugars, are totally broken apart into carbon dioxide. There is no sugar left. Two ATPs are generated from the release of energy in the Krebs cycle from breaking apart the sugar. Six NADs each pick up a pair of hot potato hydrogens, and two FADs each pick up a pair of hot potato hydrogen atoms. That's what's occurred by the end of the Krebs cycle. By the end of the Krebs cycle of aerobic cellular respiration, <clears throat> uh, we can summarize so far what's happened, and then we'll take a look at what still yet needs to happen. By the end of the Krebs cycle, the sugar molecule has been totally broken apart into six carbon dioxides. Uh, another thing that's happened is that we have generated a net gain of four ATPs. You might say, well, where did the four ATPs come from? Two ATPs were produced in glycolysis, occurring at the very beginning of uh, uh, the cellular respiration process. An additional two ATPs was generated in the Krebs cycle. 
That's a net gain of four ATP so far. Uh, by the end of the Krebs cycle, a total of 10 NADs have each picked up a pair of hot potato hydrogen atoms and electrons. You might say, well, how did I get 10 NADs? Two NADs picked up a pair of hot potato hydrogen atoms and electrons in glycolysis near the beginning. Two more NADs picked up a pair of hot potato hydrogen atoms in the transition reaction. And six more NADs picked up a pair of hot potato hydrogen atoms in the Krebs cycle. That's a total of two plus two plus six, or 10 NADs so far have picked up a pair of hot potato hydrogens. In addition, also in the Krebs cycle, two FADs, which is the B vitamin riboflavin, also picked up a pair of hot potato hydrogen atoms. Now, of course, you might be saying, what's all this about? What's this for? We're going to get to that. But before we do, let's summarize what still yet needs to happen. What yet needs to happen in order to finish off this cellular respiration process? And the answer is two things. First, where's the remaining 34 ATP? We began by saying that in the breaking apart of glucose into carbon dioxide and water, a grand total of up to a maximum of 38 ATP could be generated, at least in the muscle cells of our body. We have explained how we got four ATPs. Where are the remaining 34 to give us a total of 38? And the second and last thing that we still need to show you is where are these hot potato hydrogen atoms and electrons transferred to oxygen to form water? We said that eventually those hot potato hydrogen atoms that were removed from the sugar molecule would be transferred to oxygen to form water. Where does that happen? The answer to both of these two things that yet need to happen occurred in the last series of reactions. The last series of reactions are called the electron transport system. Some books call it the electron transport system. Some call it the uh, uh, electron transport chain or the phosphorylation chain. It goes by many names. <clears throat> so let's see what's going to happen in the electron transport system. This is a series of reactions occurring on the inner membrane of the mitochondria and it involves many coenzymes, which are many vitamins and minerals. These coenzymes are lined up in a row. If each of these circles represents a vitamin or a mineral, uh, they represent a series of coenzymes or vitamins and minerals lined up in a row. Before we examine this to see the details of it, let's give you an analogy of that to help us better understand what the electron transport system is about. The analogy we're going to use is a game called hot potato. Now there are variations on this game which is commonly played in the backyard or at a park. The way we're going to play this game is we're going to imagine a row of people lined up in a row, maybe 10, 12 people lined up in a row, and imagine we've got a little barbecue and we've got potatoes wrapped in aluminum foil and we're grilling, we're cooking these potatoes on our barbecue grill. And the idea of our game is I'm going to take some tongs 